Greetings everyone. Today we're going to explore writing linear equation word problems. Now in this video, we're going to stick to the basics, just slope intercept form. So let's get going. Now in your notebook, you definitely want to jot this slide down. This is going to be the basis or the main point of all your notes. We have been working with slope intercept form for a long time. So some things we already know. We already know that the M stands for slope. So what do we have to watch out for? We have to look out for words that describe this as a rate of change in the real world. So things that describe timeliness, like weekly, daily, monthly, those are a rate of change. We also, very importantly, need to keep out an eye to decide if we have a positive or a negative slope. So if something's increasing monthly, it'd be positive. If something is decreasing daily, then it would be a negative value. You're going to have to decide if it's positive or negative. We also are very familiar with the y-intercept. Um, you've heard me use the phrase beginning. B is for beginning. So keep thinking that. It's going to look a little differently, though, in word problems. We're talking about the starting value. So if I'm talking a bank account, it would be the original amount in the bank account. If I'm talking about a decrease in temperature, it would be the original temperature. And then, of course, our x and our y are still our input and output. We're going to look through three examples, and we're just sticking to the basics here. We're talking about an airplane three, excuse me, 30,000 feet above the ground, and it begins descending at a rate of 2,000 feet per minute. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to identify is the slope, the m value. So which value is changing or is a rate? Well, in this case, it actually tells you 2,000. Now we have to decide, is that a positive 2,000 or a negative? Very careful. This word descending implies decreasing, going down. So that's a negative slope. Okay, you have to look out for those keywords to make that decision. We then can look at what's my y-intercept, my beginning value. Well, it's beginning, the plane is beginning, at 30,000 feet. So now to write my equation, right? Our goal is y equals mx plus b. This is what we've been doing in this unit. We always write y, we always write x. The slope is always before the x. So negative 2,000. The b is always added or subtracted onto the end. Well, it's a positive 30,000 feet, so we add it on. Okay, this is what um, assignments, quizzes, this is the expectation that I'm going to have as far as filling in the blanks and then writing the equation. All right, let's take a look at another one. Suppose you receive $100 for a graduation present and you deposit it into a savings account. Very responsible, right? Then each week thereafter, you add $5 to the account and we're not going to worry about interest. So first of all, let's talk about slope. Slope is the change over time. What value is changing? In this case, it's the $5. And I know this because it says each. The word each is a good clue on what your rate is. Because it's $5 in week one, another $5 to week two, another $5. It keeps changing, keeps changing the original value. So my slope is 5. Now, am I adding five or taking away five? Adding five, so it's a positive five, positive slope, it's going up. The y-intercept, y-intercept is your original amount. Well, from day one, second one, you had $100, and that's a positive $100. You're starting with more money than what you originally had. So let's write an equation. Again, maybe always write this at the top of your paper, it makes things a little bit easier. 
which means I need to fill in the m and the b. y equals space x. My slope is 5, and I'm adding on a positive b value of 100. So why do we even need these equations? Well, because I could take it a step further and I could ask you, hey, how much money is he going to have in 50 weeks? You could plug in 50 into the equation and calculate it very quickly. This is a good method if you want to save up to a certain amount and you want to see how long it'll take you. You can use a linear equation. All right, let's take a look at one more example. In order to join an online gaming site, there's a $20 startup fee and a $5 monthly fee. This happens in a lot of ways so that companies can make more money. Think of a gym membership, right? Uh, let's talk anytime fitness. You have this one-time fee and then you pay monthly. Um, cell phones. You sort of have this initial startup fee when you join a certain company and then you pay monthly. So it's a really common scenario and example. So first, let's talk about the slope. The slope is the change, the move. Remember how I use that word move? Which value is moving or changing? That's going to be the $5 because it says monthly. If you have monthly or daily, that implies that LY implies that it's going to keep going. So that is your change. It's $5 a month. Let's talk about the y-intercept. This is your beginning. Where are you beginning? Well, your beginning startup fee is $20. Let's talk about writing our equation. So I have y equals space x. My slope is 5. My initial cost is $20. Now we'll keep these positive. Why? Because if I ask you, hey, how much would it cost to be a member for a year? Then, if you're trying to find that out, you could plug 12 in for x, multiply, add 20, and then you'd know the total cost for a whole year. When it comes to budgeting, especially with a family, that's something you might do to see what your yearly costs are. All right, you guys, pretty quick, right? Not too bad. So key things to remember for your slope. Look for keywords. Words that end in L-Y, words that say rate, words that deal with change, um, and then of course, is it positive or negative? Are we talking increase, decrease, descending? Um, look for any implications of positive or negative. That's going to be very important moving forward. B, your beginning. What value is this scenario starting at? You do have to keep an eye out for positive, negative. More often than not, it'll be positive, but keep an eye out for that just in case, okay? And then most importantly, remembering your formula. You guys have to have this memorized, okay? Because we've been dealing with this so long. The M is before the X. The B is added or subtracted at the end. All right, as always, make sure you check Google Classroom. What are the tasks to go along with this video? What are the expectations? Check out PowerSchool. How are you doing? Are you missing anything? Take a look. And then if you ever need any help, make sure you reach out. Let me know. Let's work together. And until next time, have a good one.